Today we have a development update for Kerbal Space Program 2 along with a new AMA. The AMA comes from the game's design director, whilst the development update comes from Nate Simpson, a creative director. So we're going to jump in and have a look. Let's see what's going on with KSP2 this week. So as you can see, the development update is a relatively small one, but it does give us a few nice interesting insights as to what has been going on with the game as well as where it's going in the coming weeks. So the biggest thing that we want to take away is this bit. Right now we're full steam ahead on the feature development for the upcoming science update. This of course is going to be the first big major update for KSP2 and is the first step along the roadmap. The roadmap has as the first major feature science, something we really do want to see. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to add some significant uh, content to the game. They also say they're working on performance and stability as well as the thermal system. Now the question is, will the thermal system come in the science update or is the thermal system going to be coming as a separate patch, maybe a patch 3? No news in either direction on that just yet. It says they're also working on a few new parts, which we can see a screenshot of in just a moment. Chris Adderley, a.k.a. Nutty, Nutty, has cooked up some uh, lovely vacuum-optimised engines with extensible uh, nozzles to help fill out the upper end of the uh, progression there. So let's have a look there. You can see the uh, screenshots of some of those parts. Neat to look in engines. Elsewhere, Nate talked about the patch 2, which came out um, a couple of weeks ago at this point. I think he says by far the most controversial change, most discussed part of uh, the second patch has been the change they made to manoeuvre nodes. The change made it uh, impossible. It prevented players from planning manoeuvres beyond their fuel allotment currently aboard their vehicle. The change was made to prevent a manoeuvre node from lying to the player. So they say that in future they still want to give players the ability to um, plan or pretend effectively uh, plan these manoeuvres even if they don't have fuel. But it's something that they don't want just yet in the game because for some reason it was adding some confusion. Uh, the game was effectively telling players they could perform a manoeuvre a manoeuvre that they couldn't. So that's why that change was made. At any rate, that is the pretty much the most of the content there for the development update. We got a little bit of information there about the AMA and the usual uh, community updates as well. Let's dive over and have a look at the AMA. This has got a whole load of questions on there, posted by Dakota, but of course posted by or written by the uh, design director, Shana. Shana, Shana, sorry if I've got your name wrong there. Um... Now, there's a lot of questions here, so I'm not going to go through every single one of these, especially because they're not really pertinent to this specific video. For example, what planet are you most proud of or what has been your favorite thing to work on so far? So if those are the type of questions that do interest you, then by all means, do check out the AMA, which I will link in the video description below. But as we scroll down, you'll see there is a whole load of questions here. So I really want to kind of uh, mix and match this and go through the ones that I feel uh, really stood out to me. So we'll start with this one. What is the most important change in design of KSP2 from KSP1 that you feel is overlooked by the community? And the answer to this, approachability. All of the little things that lead to more people coming to the game and moving away from opaqueness. So uh, yet yeah, KSP1 could be pretty difficult. Sometimes you'll make mistakes and it really have to be a process of trial and error to figure out what you've done wrong on way had gone wrong and sometimes even looking at information on the internet was not much help in these occasions yeah it was a very long arduous process to uh, learn that game but arguably it was also a part of its charm so backed up here by moving away from hope you remembered this we want the players to come in uh, learn try fail and want to try again that doesn't happen if the game doesn't provide players with information and guidance needed to make those decisions which is complicated when you're dealing with the game that includes rocketry and orbital mechanics we can't simplify that stuff so they're not dumbing the game down so we're going to have to guide players carefully so a very interesting balance there let's move on to the next one most players don't know how to do a re-entry and land precisely 
How will you teach players to land precisely near colonies to deliver resources there? Or will you get instruments to predict landing the sites for a delivery path? So as we progress through some of the questions here, I have picked out a lot to do with colonies and resource gathering because for me, that is uh, really interesting content for the future of the game. So the tutorial suite currently in game is the beginning. For every milestone, we ask ourselves, what else can we add? So yes, more tutorials to each more advanced topics. Certainly when colonies come out, advanced landings will be extremely useful. Now, one of our writers, Jim Peck, did a knowledge share uh, internally about precision landings. And that taught us a lot about how in-depth that topic can be. And we have to figure out how to distill that down to make it approachable for new players. So it seems at the moment this is still in the very early design phases, at least for this specific topic. So that's not to say that internally they don't have colonies developed, but well, the landings themselves is what they're talking about here. How are they going to actually approach that? So something that they want to talk about and that there's something they don't really want to dumb down. What are your goals with regards to balance for these uh, technologies? What technologies? Is the intent for uh, late game parts to essentially replace early parts or for lower tech solutions to still be viable and necessary in the late game? So uh, when you're looking at raw power and numbers, cars can break horses, okay? You see new technology just beat out old technology, a very fair point. But for things like exploration, older technologies can be relevant as well because maybe the resources are more prevalent where you're exploring. So it seems to be what they're saying here is that it will still be possible to use old technologies even when you have new technologies to hand. And for some cases, it may even be preferable or essential for you to, you to use older technologies so you can go and gather certain at resources which perhaps you'll need for crafting the newer technologies. Will previous science parts for KSP1 be in KSP2? Parts will be different between the two games. In this case, the design team really wants to hit their own building and flying usage challenges. You'll see less, let me put a thermometer on my command pod, and more, I've got this weird bulbous thing which um, performs an experiment. I need to build a rocket around it. Interesting. in. Right. With resource management, and we've got a whole bunch of questions I've kind of put together here because they are sort of related. With resource management, are the resources we gather raw materials that need to convert into usable resources? Would we need to build a refinery system? So yes, you'll gather raw resources and then refine them into what you need. Chris Adderley had a lot of fun building a production uh, chain graph, which I hope we one day get to release since it's really helpful how to understand how that all flows together. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of resources out there. How many will there be? I think we're looking at 15 to, or 14 to 15 specific resources throughout the universe, focused on what you need for propulsion. Same resource may be present in multiple locations, but prevalence, proximity to your existing infrastructure factors we're thinking about as well so not too many resources we're not going to go and find the hundreds of them here and i'm really glad to hear that actually because some games uh, really get overwhelming with the sheer abundance of resources you need for every little different thing every little component every little thing you want to craft or every little goal that you want to achieve so this doesn't seem to be the direction that ksp2 is going in instead they're fairly limited in terms of resources 14 to 15 but of course, some of these are going to be uh, essential. So in a previous AMA, it got said that colonies will be built using resources. But the resources gathering update comes after the colonies one. How will that work? So uh, there was a question further on that was answered about the roadmap. This is one of the outcomes when everything is building on top of another. We wanted to make sure exploration is about exploration. So effectively what this means is that Intercept Games did not want to build a KSP2 to be about base building, about resource gathering and resource processing and building up supply chains and all of that. It first and foremost is about rockets. So that's why they put the ability to construct colonies first. So with the initial um, release of colonies, what players will be doing is being able to, by the looks of it, build colonies without resources. 
Uh, so this is why um, resource gathering is coming later, because they don't want to tempt themselves, I guess. They don't want to tempt themselves into making the game about collecting those resources first and foremost. They want you to be able to build uh, bases and have all that accessible. So by putting in colonies first, they avoid some potential traps that they might otherwise fall into. Are there plans to increase the complexity, fidelity, variety of volumetric clouds in future updates? So yes, alongside performance, this is a pretty constant point of discussion for our teams. I really uh, do hope that performance is higher up the list there because uh, the game is still signif significantly suffering from performance issues. I don't want to touch on that too much in this video because it has been talked about a whole lot so far. But alternate atmospheric engines, referring back to EVE, would we have engines that can run on other atmospheric gases without a need for oxygen? Would we be able to collect gases from uh, an atmosphere as part of resource harvesting system? So not using oxygen is something that we want to put through its paces for authenticity and gameplay values. Maybe it's something we could do, but also what do we and the players get out of this? Does it open up it up too much? Uh, that's the beginning part of the conversation, so it's something that they are still uh, looking into. There's a lot of good things in atmosphere, so expect in the future that the Kerbals will start to give them more attention. So, yeah, if not um, fuel or burnings for engines, there may be other resources that can be taken from the atmospheres there. With these stellar technologies and travel on the roadmap, is relativity a thing in KSP2? Will KSP2 handle the time dilation effects when traveling at high velocities to the target system. That's going to be especially interesting when you're talking about multiplayer, isn't it? Uh, so Nate, that's Nate Simpson, creative director, uh, talks about this and it's terrifying. No other comment. Very curious. Very much looking forward to the prospect of colonies. Will adding two orbital colonies be similar to how we already make space stations, etc., or will that work differently? So orbital colonies would follow a similar flow to terrestrial colonies and have the same tool set. So I'd say that means orbital colonies are going to be different to how we put space stations up currently as uh, well, the orbital colonies are going to follow the similar flow to terrestrial colonies, which I would say is going to be different to existing space stations. Would it be dedicated parts for building boats and submarines? Underwater bases even? Underwater bases definitely scare me a little, but we 100% want to support boats. KSP-1 has some awesome boat content and we want to continue to allow that. But also, there are some celestial bodies that might have some challenges you might need a boat for. So there we have it. I think that brings us to the end of... That's just it. it. Yep, that brings us to the end of the questions in the AMA. That really stood out to me. Again, there's a lot on there if you want to go and look at the full thing. A whole variety of different topics covered from uh, the studio team's favourite aspects of the game to many other uh, elements as well. But these are the ones that I thought were really pertinent to the future of the game. They touch on some very interesting topics such as uh, colonies and resource management and resource gathering. So, yeah, we tried to keep, I tried to keep a... Uh, Pretty consistent theme there. At any rate, let me know what you're thinking about the future of KSP2. Are you looking forward to colonies? Are you looking forward to resource gathering? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.